Hello and welcome to Sigma Gamma Rho 22 minute chat se session. My name is SOAR Dr. Camille White. Sigma Gamma Rho is proud to partner with the NIH All of Us Research Program for Precision Medicine. The program is a historic effort to gather data from 1 million persons from diverse backgrounds to accelerate research and improve health. The goal is to find ways to treat and prevent disease in our community. These sessions are meant to provide you with valuable information while navigating the current COVID-19 health crisis. Today, I am pleased to have Sora Bonetta Bradford. Sora Bradford lost over 100 pounds. She actually lost 125 pounds during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. She went from a size 24 to size 10, and we want to hear all about it. Bonetta K. Bradford was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and is a member of Kappa Gamma Sigma alumni chapter. She was raised by both her parents, learning early in life to be ready to overcome all struggles, worship, and develop a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father and love yourself. Taking this philosophy aspired her to work with others and help them get to that same level. She has worked in various settings, helping youth, elderly, mentally and chemically dependent college students, veterans and individuals with disabilities. She grew to understand that the first work is working on yourself and being a positive role model. She knew that within herself, she has to make a model that works on the total person, mentally, physically, emotionally and intellectually. She founded her company, b, b Life Resolutions LLC in 2015 to place her in the position to help others achieve their goal by examining resources and searching for the inner strength to over overcome the obstacles that may get in their way. Thank you so much. Um, welcome, Sora Bonetta Bradford. Hey, Sans. Hey. Look, looking good. Oh, thank you. So tell us all about your story. Well, um, during this COVID situation, during this COVID time frame, I was I was already on a mission of working on my total self and losing weight. I was having struggles with weight for a while, and I've, I'm also a victim of yo-yoing. I'll lose the weight and gain it back. So. Um, at the time when the COVID situation happened, I was already just walking every day at work. And um, I wanted to incorporate the gym, but I never made it there. And it, the, the COVID ma made it so that I never made it during the COVID at the beginning when it, first, when it first occurred. So I just began walking at work and, and, and doing my lunchtime to get in I was geared, geared towards walking so many steps a day. And um, with that, I started changing my diet and incorporating healthier eating habits so that I can begin to, the, um, to lose weight because I just didn't want to, um, I didn't want to experience the challenges that uh, my family members were going through doing, due to obesity. And, um, it really, um, so during the COVID situation, I started going to walking, I started even walking in the metro parks when it got warmer and, and made, made my walking um, the actual motivation for the weight loss. It helped me to get closer to God, to get motivated, to meditate, and to work on um, building relationships with friends that helped me to do the walking too. Awesome. So you live in Cleveland and I know it's very cold there. So tell me about your, your workout regimen while, you know, during the winter. Um, it's, it's always very challenging to get out in that cold. So tell me about how you handled that. I didn't really good get out too much. I walked indoors. So I would try to find indoor places to get my steps in at. And my job has an, a gallery where you can walk around in circles and I would just focus on getting so many steps in a day, whether I was just walking back and forth, walking in circles, or just walking in general, um, just enough to, to get my 10,000 steps in a day. Okay. Um, so you mentioned 
um, work. How did you incorporate the the steps into your work routine? So um, I'm a real early bird person. I would get up early just to make sure that I could get enough stuff in a day. I would come into work about an hour early and begin walking before my shift start, which at that time it was 7.30 in the morning. So I would get to work about 6.30, 6.15 to do my steps and to make sure that I got them in a day. And even now, I've incorporated going to the gym at five o'clock in the morning in order to make sure that I get working out in. Did you just walk in the morning or did you do lunchtime and in the evening too? Yes, I, I began working out in the morning. Um, and I, at work, I would just, I would walk in the morning at work and then at lunchtime I would walk during the cold season. And then after the weather became um, warmer, I started walking in the morning at lunchtime and outside. Right. What type of um, barriers did you face to get yourself motivated? I know when I talk to people about um, weight loss and um, physical activity, they'll say, oh, you know, they don't have the proper shoes or um, food is expensive. What type of barriers did you encounter and overcome? Um, the barriers I've, I really had is my mindset. I'm not believing, wanting to eat what I wanted to eat and um, lose weight and also emotional barriers um, where food has just been a rescue to me when I get overwhelmed and stressed out and family barriers where I would go with, over to my mom's house and she have a big porterhouse steak waiting for me to eat when I get over there, you know. Then a plate of not only a porterhouse steak, but some fried potatoes with with uh, green peppers and onions in them. And, um, those, and then a big old piece of, of chocolate cake sitting there for dessert as well. And also, since I really am a single woman, I like to go out to eat. So trying to eat healthy made it li limited my choices on what I can eat when I go out. Right. So you mentioned um, eating healthy. What type of um, preparation do you do as far as food is concerned? Well, right now I do do some food prepping. I make sure I eat easy foods like chicken and fish. I bought me a ninja where I could, that helped me prepare my food and it does it in a, in a fast manner, you know. I cook it before going to work and, um, and I cook it for all day so I don't have to come home and cook as well. On top of that, I've incorporated smoothies in my diet. For in the mornings, I would have my own smoothie. I've even taken a blender to work to put in my drawer just to make smoothies in the morning and that helps. God, how long did it take you to lose the weight? You went from a size 24 to a 10, right? Yes, it took me over eight uh, months to lose the weight, um, be, especially when I started walking in the, in the summertime extra when the weather broke. I was dropping the weight pretty steadily. And it was by the summertime, I mean, by the beginning of summer, I had lost half of the weight about 40 pounds. And then at the end of the summer, I had lost the additional over the, the 100 mark to lose the rest of the weight. Gosh. So did you elicit family members to walk with you or were you mostly by yourself? You know, tell me the secret. Did you have a, a great um, a playlist or how did you how did you stay motivated and manage the, the exercise routine? It was inner motivation to do it. To, it's my mindset to get up and do something each day. But I also had a few walking buddies that would walk with me at lunchtime. And I had a, a guy that would walk with me at the Metro Park since the gyms were closed. We just went out at the Metro Parks. It wasn't, we was not affected by the COVID out there. You just had to wear a mask while you were walking.
Wow, that's awesome. So what type of physical and emotional changes have you seen within your body since you've not only gone through this journey, but have been successful? Oh, I have a lot of emotional. Um, you know, I was in with the emotional part. I was in a relationship that caused a lot of emotional eating. I even had a partner that was saying, well, when are you going to lose some weight? And um, I looked at him and told him, I lose when I get ready to lose. You know, I really don't need you to tell me when to lose weight, you know. And then I was looking at him and thinking to myself, I can accept him for who he is. He needs to accept me for who I am. And um, on top of that, it was the stress of my job of sitting there all day long because I sit all day long. And that brought about emotional snacking and boredom snacking. So those overcoming those were really hard um, with the with the um, snacking. I just had to replace those with healthy snacks instead of just grabbing potato chips and candy to eat. That's awesome. So what are some of your healthy snacks that you re that you go to? What's your go to snacks? My go to snacks are fruit. Um, I eat stuff like um sugar-free candy, you know, I still am a chocolate fanatic. So when I was really on this Reese cup kick, I, I said, you know, I really shouldn't be eating Reese cups, but I go and now I eat these sugar-free Reese cups when I just gotta have some chocolate, you know. It's not, it, it doesn't taste too bad, it tastes pretty good. So it gives, it, it takes away that urge to have sweetness in my, in my system. Gosh. And that's basically it, the fruit and the, and, the, and the healthy snacking, yeah. I even replaced the potato chips with protein chips, and that helps. I even, that helps in, up my intake of protein every day when I got to have potato chips. Wow. Um, so you talk about walking. Have you incorporated any other exercises um, into your program? No. Yes, you know, as an older female now in my mid age now range, after losing this weight, I find myself in a flabby um, mark where I'm a little flabbier than I would prefer to be. So I've had to incorporate resistant training now. I've hired a, private, a personal trainer. Mind you, I had to look high and low because I knew my funding was kind of limited. So I see him twice a week and um, help him to show me how to perform these resistant training with a good form because my back isn't the best. And I didn't want to injure myself trying to do this resistant training. Right, so um, with the weight loss, have you found that your back feels a little bit better or perhaps um, there's relief on your joints, anything, any other type of um, body changes that you've noticed? Yes, I mean, I see myself, my stomach is getting flatter, you know, I'm, I'm waiting on my six pack now, you know, and um, also my hips is getting luscious and, and beautiful, you know, I'm already curvy. Now, the, it, now with the weight loss, I'm even curvier, you know, I got a different little swag as I walk now because I'm feeling good, looking good, and I, I know I'm good now, you know. Awesome. Yeah. That's very encouraging for Soror. So let me ask this question. What resources have you used to aid in your weight loss? Okay, well, I've used several resources. I've, I now, I first started using Total Life Changes products. I found that those products have helped me and helped me to get over the hump where I just wasn't losing any weight. Seemed like I was doing everything. I couldn't get past losing. The Total Life Changes products are good for helping me, helping me to maintain, to cut down my, to build, to increase my metabolism. And it also has helped in my energy level with their Nutriburst and their NRG. I feel like I have this ever ready energy that helps me um, go. And, um, 
also I you, use go ahead. Go ahead. And I also use like a Fitbit to keep track of my steps, my sleeping patterns, and I make sure that I get so much sleep a night. And also other apps that's been really a good instrumental in helping like um the um my fitness pal where I have to write down and keep track of what I'm eating because I find that when you go to the doctor, they are always ask, what are you eating? So I try to keep a little track of what I'm eating and show them this is what I eat. Right. Um, you mentioned like the, the Fitbit. I use one too, and I've used it for exercise. And to lose weight, I have to go way above, beyond the 10,000 steps. Usually I'm at like 14, 16,000, something like that. So it is, it is good to be able to track yourself. So you've, you've shared some um, really good information. I know that sometimes um, when I've tried to make improvements in myself, my family has had kind of a bad reaction. And you mentioned your mom coming up with the porterhouse steaks and things like that. So how did you actually get acceptance from your family um, that you were on this journey? Well, you know, I've, I've seen how my niece that's obese has come and asked me to help her lose weight. As she sees me lose weight, it inspires her to lose weight some. And she's just in, in her early teen years. And with my mom, I just have had to say, look, mom, you know, if you want to help, just cook me some vegetables. That'll help me so much if you just... If you just cook me some vegetables, like some cabbage, that was right down her alley to just fill me up with cabbage. So that that helped me some instead of the porterhouse steaks and the pork chop, fried pork chops and greens and um and the and the potatoes. If I'm not careful, she even try to slide some chitlins in on me. Gosh. Um. <laughs> So what type of advice would you give um, a soul or someone struggling through COVID because it is hard to stay physically active? What type of advice and tips would you would you give them? Um, I would say, to you know, it's so many resources out there now to do what do weight loss at home and exercising at home. I am just one of them got to do something out in the community types or do something outside the home. But when I can't get out the home, I, I'm doing sit-ups. I have my little weights that I'm using to help with my arms. I'm also, I even bought me a fit, Planet Fitness membership. I, it's, you can get them as cheap as $10 if you want to stay at the same gym. I bought that so that during this winter time, I had girlfriends that liked to work out there. So I, I would meet some of them there in the weekdays when I know they're going in the morning. And just so I can stay motivated on those dark days that I don't want to go out. Yeah, because we all have those dark days, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so how does this impact? So how does what you've done, your accomplishment impact Clinical Research, Black Healthcare, and the All of Us Research Program. Um, my, my, um, what it has done for me in clinical research is the fact that I was afraid that to go down the path of obesity and the heart problems and conditions, high blood pressure and diabetes that my family has encountered by me losing weight my blood pressure is excellent. My um, but my diabetes is. I don't. I'm not a candidate for any of those diagnoses at all. All of my blood count. My blood look good. Everything is t in tip top shape. I have this overabundance of energy, and I feel better. And I'm able to inspire others to feel better as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable information and hopefully you'll inspire someone else to get on the path to fitness. Now, uh, in closing, we have a video from the National Institutes of Health All of Us Research Program on Precision Medicine. We are one nation, one people. When called upon to give from within, 
we come together and find that our capacity to help others is limitless. What lies inside all of us is more than data. It's life. It's more than insight and medical research. It's vision and honor and compassion. What's flowing through America's veins is its diversity. The next great breakthrough will be found in each and every one of us. And what we find there will unlock mysteries, heal the sick, and eradicate disease. We ask for one million individuals to come forward and stand on this landmark in history. All of us are different, and it's those very differences that will lead to answers for generations to come.